The first tip, there's the biggest giveaway in the world. 100,000 Golden Eagles brought to you by World of Tanks. Smash your enemies with your tank. You gotta help I'm me, bro! You gotta, gotta help me, bro! Yes! yes! Do you like teamwork? Dude, where are you, dude? I don't know, I'm just chilling. Oh, come on, man. Team, help! I'm gonna die, dude. Oh, man, I'm gonna die. Yes! Nice job! Lots of missions with massive rewards, lands to conquer, and friends to make. What do you think about my new looks? You were, you were saying something? Nope, nothing. Insane variety of vehicles to choose from. Do you like guns? Very big guns. Massive guns. Look at what I've got. Dude, where did you get know, that? Just, just got oh, it, man. Lord, sir, you are shoot, aiming shoot, at the building close and no does no not move. If you're a new player, then click on the link in the video description to sign up for and install World of Tanks for free. Use code COMBAT to get 250,000 silver, 7 days premium, Tiger 131T78 times 64 for 10 battles, and premium tank crown will be for life. To enter the 100,000 Golden Eagle giveaway, just subscribe and write a comment. That's all you gotta uh, do. You gotta do it, man. I beg you, man. Also, mate. download World of Tanks for Smash in Action. Thank you to World of Tanks for sponsoring this video. You see this guy running like an influencer, even though he is looking to be penetrated downstairs, it's actually the most effective way to bait your enemies, which also increases your survivability for a lot of tanks. Most shells, especially in low tier, blow up after the penetration, and instead of that shell blowing up in your crew compartment, it blows up in the engine, dealing absolutely no damage to your crew, and you can fix it later, no problem. That is the reason reason why you shot at that wheeled vehicle with your Yak Tiger and he was absolutely fine after. When you start flying with planes in ground battles, you might notice that landing those bombs is extremely difficult because it varies from your speed, how much does the bomb weigh, the angle that you're coming at, it's just a heady. Well, to make it easier for yourself, this is where you have to aim in general. The closer you are to the ground, the closer to the plane you aim. But that's still hard to hit, so what you do is get some height and make a steeper angle. If the angle isn't very steep, aim with the center of your screen. Put a permanent marker if you have to. And the steeper your angle becomes, the closer to your crosser you have to aim. Just make sure not to swing from side to side and get some speed. Drop that bomb and get that easy. Silver. You wonder how streamers get sniping kills from spawn to spawn? While loading into a map, you get this grid and distance of the grid. All you have to do is calculate how far it is from your spawn to the enemy spawn and whenever you load in be as quick as possible and send some rockets at that distance set when flying with a bomber some trash plane might get on your back it might be counterintuitive where to aim at first basically you have to aim in this area the closer the enemy plane gets to your tail the shorter the distance of where you will have to aim do not aim in front of it because your bullets will never hit him same rule applies if he is below you or on the other side you can fake entry with a friend by fixing your tank turret after your buddy shoots at you. To fix your turret, you must go to controls common and check fix gun direction in mouse view. Then whenever you look around, your cannon will be locked. It will take a bit of time to get used to, but whenever you get bombed or shot by Artie, you can fake an entry. And this kill-hungry boy will run at you with absolutely no hesitation, bringing you a bag of easy experience. If you dislike the mechanic of fixing your turret, bind driver's view to a key and use it in the same way as locking camera. The issue is that it limits your view, but you don't have to do it for a long period. Just make sure enemy thinks that you are hurt. Everybody knows that whenever you're playing in high tiers, your main shell should be a PFSDS. But what I really recommend is taking a couple of head shells, not heat. Those are useless lately. You see, head shells are pretty slow and have worse ballistics, but it allows you to shoot over cover from safe position at those pesky sniping light techs. Just use a rangefinder on them and send that hash. When you're getting locked on by infrared missiles, spam flares only whenever you see a rocket coming your way. This way your opponent won't be able to bait out your entire arsenal of flares, and he will waste his weaponry. On the other hand, to bait radar locking missiles, you have to spam chaff before your enemy locks on you. But the best way to bait them would be to fly close to the ground and 
angle 90 degrees off your enemy, then there's a pretty high chance that the rocket won't even hit you without even using the flares. When enemy rocket is coming your way, not only you have to shoot out flares, but also turn off the afterburner, because if not, enemy rocket might ignore those flares and still go for that juicy buttocks. Basically, if it's hot, it locks onto it. The thing that is also hot is sun, and if you ran out of flares, it could definitely save you from getting properly locked by a missile, except if it's a radar missile, then it's a GG. If your enemy is standing in the middle of nowhere and you want to send an accurate artillery shot on him, use the designated target for squad pointer while aiming at your enemy, then turn on artillery map and send it over. It will boost your RD accuracy like crazy. Commander thermals. This thing allows you to see a wider view with thermal vision. Not all tanks have it, but it is extremely useful and might save your life. We all know that camo is very effective and sometimes it definitely helps, but it might cost money or your new tank just might not have it unlocked. What I always used to do is to use sticker decorations as a budget camo. It's absolutely free and it is way better than nothing. Just make sure to expand it as widely as possible and apply it. Do not spend your money on these skins because most players have this thing turned off by default and they will never see your $70 skin anyways. If you want it for yourself, just download it for free. The only thing that everyone will see is decorations and there's no way to turn them off. This is a tier list of shells that are best to use as your main shell. High explosive shells are extremely random so they are not going to be top tier. The best damaging shell and the least random is this one. It deals great damage but you might need to learn a few weak spots to use them effectively. Effectively. And the top tier shell is definitely APFS DS, by far best penetration and kind of decent damage depending on caliber and just tanks. This tip, you don't have to do it, but it makes the game way more enjoyable and that is whenever you load into a map you dislike, just leave it instantly. You will be replaced by another player, no issues there. Bro, there are like 53 maps in this game and you know how many maps you can ban? Zero. And if you have a premium, congratulations, you can ban one map. If you get four maps you hit in a row, you're not going to play the game anymore. But if you just leave them and look for maps you like, then you will be happier. Game will also benefit because instead of you leaving in 40 minutes of gameplay, you'll play for two hours, keeping online count higher for longer. You work hard all day, game should be an enjoyment, not a reason to rage. But again, it's War Thunder. While playing, the most fair vehicles in game partially hide behind structures as it makes it impossible to lock onto you. Whenever playing an open roof vehicle and there are enemy planes roaming around, to avoid them, don't move, as still targets are way harder to spot than moving ones. If the game is lagging, turn off grass range to zero as it eats insane amount of resources. You see this bush? Well, it's not there if you're a little bit further. So don't trust smaller bushes, they'll get you killed. This is a game feature that gives massive advantage over other players. It's called tree range. If you want to spot targets as a pilot way easier, then it's a must. If you're playing a tank and you want to spot enemies, sometimes even through walls, then it's also a must. Bumping it down to zero gives you insane advantage over others. It's not only trees, it's almost everything. It's a game feature. If you want better results than use it, it will definitely help you earn more XP and silver, but some people think it's not really fair, so really depends on you. Most entire vehicles can't aim directly above themselves, and even when they can, it is the most uncomfortable aiming experience ever. So for pilots trying to destroy those anti-airs, just fly above them and pound down like there's no tomorrow. This is a little bit more toxic one for players that hate cast pilots. Whenever you see an enemy bomb land right next to you and it's just death, it's done, you can very quickly try to leave your vehicle and self-destruct. This way, the pilot will kind of waste his bomb because he won't get any XP for you. But to counter this toxic leaving, some pilots shoot the target with a machine gun first so that if they decide to jump out quickly, they would still register as a kill for the pilot. If you spot an enemy helicopter and they're 
there's a small thing coming at you, throw smoke while driving backwards, and as soon as he's gone out of your view range, drive forward, throwing off his shot completely. Driving backwards is slower than forwards, that's why going forward later is better. The difference between low tier casting and high tier casting is that in low BRs, your fights are usually medium to close distance, basically doing things that would get you killed in seconds if applied in high tiers. So how to cast in high tiers? Well, it's usually either being very far in sniping or extremely close bombing. The higher your skill gets, the closer to medium distance engagements you can get without instantly dying. If you want to learn how to bomb stuff, shoot rockets and so on, do not go to the testing grounds. It is useless as there aren't enough targets over there. Make a custom battle, press create section, choose whichever map you want to train on, make it 6 hours, include bots. You can actually just copy whatever I sit here, smash in random password, and now you have a perfect training grounds with infinite enemies that are moving kind of in the same positions where players go most of the time. Well, maybe rarely. With massive cannons, while using high explosive shells, you can take out open roof tanks by shooting near them. You don't even have to hit them directly. So basically, if enemies are holding an angle close to you, shoot the ground close to them, which will overpressure them and send them back to the angar. You can shoot down enemy rockets with your machine guns and destroy them before they hit you. Having a couple of smoke shells for those cheeky campers is actually a great choice for a fast reloading tank, as it is the best feeling in your life whenever you can just punish campers and there's nothing they can do about it. These are the most important modules to unlock for tanks. Usually the main priority goes to unlocking better shells, as it's the main thing that increases your success in getting them kills. Do not trust in armor. If it saved you, it means you were gifted a good RNG. Even the heaviest tanks that seem to bounce everything can get their cannons broken and detract by a relatively weak vehicle. And it's only a matter of time till someone loads in a heat shell and will absolutely ignore that heavy load that you carry. These kind of ATTMs are ineffective against explosive reactive armor, but these tandem shaped ATGMs don't care about it. And they will go straight through that armor, no problem. These little eyes, they help mess up enemy ATGMs coming your way by disrupting their controls this way increasing your survivability, but it only works against older ATGMs. The thing is, you need to be looking at them, so enemies have to be in your field of view for this thing to work. They even work against helicopters, especially older ones, even when they fly pretty high. In simulator battles, if you're not sure if it's teammate or not, use a rangefinder on them and it will show yes if it is and no nope if it's not. Shooting at Commander Cupulus is very unreliable, because your shells have a high chance of just bouncing off or dealing very little damage. Still, sometimes it's the only chance you have. Some guys don't know it, but there are vehicles that can lock on enemy planes and show you where to aim while also assisting in aiming. Just assign a button to radar locking, go into sniper mode, and lock them, boys. Same thing applies to ground vehicles if they have radars. That would be like Chrysanthema. It can use a radar and lock onto vehicles automatically, controlling the rocket itself. But it can also lock onto targets through smoke as it completely ignores it. So basically, you can shoot two targets at once. One rocket is controlled by your radar and one rocket is controlled by you. Some tanks have ATGMs that blow up from above downward. So they can be very effective when taking out campers or just players hiding behind the cover. At least in theory. They usually don't deal any damage at all, so it's kind of annoying. This is a preliminary showcase of what battle rating tanks you are fighting against based on your vehicle respawn point cost at the beginning of the match. As you can see, it's not always a full up tier even when respawn points are cheap. It's just that there are no players with lower tier vehicles, or vast majority of vehicles are 0.4 BR higher than yours. Some might not know, but these base protecting anti-airs do not deal any damage at all, so it means that if you're playing with a stock helicopter, you can easily spawn camp enemy helipad. Whenever 
whenever you get set on fire, do not go for extinguisher because that will immobilize you and get you killed. Instead, load a shell, get rid of that enemy and only then extinguish your tank. If your enemy starts baiting you by showing his track, don't be scared of taking it out as he will be immobilized, giving you a chance to make some distance and take a free kill. However, with more modern tanks, it would be a pretty bad idea because they can rotate their vehicles way faster, granting them a free shot before you can load in another shell. If you want to unlock vehicles as a free-to-play player as quickly as possible, then use the previous vehicle before it. This way, you will get an additional experience boost for that vehicle research. With light tanks that have drones, you can cheese smoke your enemies. What you have to do is throw smoke nades, get into position, and mark your enemies with a drone designator. Quickly switch back to your tank and just send a shell to that position, granting you a free bag of experience. You can also do it with your squad mates. If one keeps throwing smoke and the next one starts marking and telling where the shot went. It is so absurdly strong that it's crazy. But since not a single War Thunder player has a friend, you pretty much never get to see it in action. So find a friend in Discord server and join our clan.